OBS Studio version 27 was released a few weeks ago now, and one of the new features that they introduced was the ability to add a track mat to your stinger transitions, which effectively allows you to have moments in your transition where you're showing both the scene that you're transitioning from and the scene that you're transitioning to together at the same time. In my OBS recap of version 27, I did that classic YouTuber thing where I farmed engagement by asking you guys if you wanted to learn how to create a stinger transition with track mat support to let me know in the comments. And it worked perfectly. That video did really well, so thanks for that. But I also now, I guess, have to make a video on how to make a stinger transition with track mat support, so here we are. So in this video, we're going to be building a stinger transition completely from scratch in After Effects, making use of your logo or any kind of image alongside your brand colors, so this is really gonna fit your stream aesthetic. We're gonna add track mat support to it to make use of that new feature, and finally add that into our streaming software of OBS Studio. So it's gonna be a long one. Grab yourself a coffee or a cup of tea, and let's sit down and jump into After Effects. Just before we dive in, I'd like to give a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, Nerd or Die. Nerdordie.com is a complete one-stop shop of all the graphical elements you could possibly need for your stream and content. They have various different packages, each with completely unique aesthetics to match every kind of streamer. Each package comes with assets like overlays, stinger transitions, alerts, webcam borders, chat and goal widgets, and some packs even come with the complete After Effects file so you can really dive into the customization and use some of the skills that you'll learn in this video. So head on over to nerdordie.com and you can use coupon code GAMINGCAREERS to save yourself 15% at checkout. Okay, so we're going to be using Adobe After Effects to create this stinger. If you don't own Adobe After Effects, you can get a free trial for seven days, which is completely limit free. So you can use it to create this uh, stinger and then choose whether or not you want to upgrade later. So I'll leave a link down in the description below to a seven day free trial for Adobe After Effects. You wanna create a new project and within that new project, you want to start by creating a new composition, which you can do by clicking this button here. Let's name this stinger transition and we want to make sure that this is 1920 by 1080, uh, 60 frames per second, so make sure this is on 60. And for the duration, we don't need 10 seconds, actually. It's only gonna be about three seconds long, so we can change this to just three seconds. Once you've done that, you can hit OK. So it's worth noting that you might see uh, the preview here with or without transparency, which you can just toggle by clicking this button here, and we're gonna be using that throughout this project when we want to see like a transparent background or not. Uh, for starting, I'm just gonna leave the transparency off so that we have a nice black background, but obviously when we render this out, it will be transparent because that's how we're gonna work with a stinger transition. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is actually create a circle on screen, which we can do by coming up to the menu here, the shape tool, and uh, if it shows rectangle tool or if it shows any other shape, then you can just click to hold down on it and change it to the tool that we want, which is the ellipse tool. That's actually how we're gonna be able to create a circle. We want to fill it with a color of our choosing, so I would recommend using one of your brand colors here, but we can always come in and change that. I'm gonna use Twitch Purple because I'm gonna use the Twitch logo as an example here. We wanna make sure that we don't have any strokes. If you click the word stroke, we can select this option, which basically means that there is no stroke applied. And then we can just drag and create our circle anywhere. If you hold down shift, it's gonna lock it so it's actually a perfect circle rather than an ellipse. And it doesn't matter where you put it because we'll center it afterwards. And it doesn't matter how big you put it because we'll resize it afterwards. The first thing we'll do is we'll rename our layer just because we are gonna be organized in this project. It's gonna be important to make sure we know which layer is which. So we can do that by right clicking, selecting rename, and we're gonna call this base circle intro. The next thing we need to do is select the layer and make sure that we have this anchor point in the center of our circle, which you can do by pressing Control, Alt, and Home. That will snap it into the center of the shape. And then we want to actually center this circle within the middle of our composition, which we can do by just pressing Control and Home. Next, we're going to resize this circle so that we're all working with the same size. So if you come down to the properties here, open up Contents, Ellipse 1, Ellipse path one, and then change the size here, 414 pixels right now to 450, and it should update to be 450 by 450, a perfect circle in the middle of our canvas. So if you followed any of my After Effects tutorials in the past, you'll know this little trick about working backwards when you have things centered. So this is actually where we want the circle to end up in the center of our screen. So what we wanna do is add a keyframe telling the composition that at this point, we want the circle to be in this position. So if we scrub across the timeline here to 10 frames in, you can always see the frame counter here, this number here, 10 frames in, in a 60 frame per second composition. We want to add a position keyframe to tell the composition that this is where the shape should be. So to do that, highlight the layer, press P on the keyboard to bring up the position keyframes, and then click this stopwatch icon to actually add a keyframe at this position. Now we can work backwards by dragging our timeline back to the start at zero frames in, 
and we want this to appear from the bottom. So what we want to do is drag the shape down off the canvas so that it starts down and then pops into place. So to do that, let's come back up to the selection tool here and then we can drag our shape downwards. And if you, whilst dragging, hold down shift, it will snap to make sure that it locks into the Y axis. We just wanna drag this off, off the composition completely. So somewhere down to about 1500 pixels, you can see the exact pixel count here. And now if we play that back, we get a really static, boring animation of our circle coming up into its position, uh, but we'll add some bounce to that now. So what we're going to do is add an expression, which is just a little bit of code that we're going to copy and paste into a box here on After Effects, which is going to make this look much more animated. It's very, very simple to do. All you have to do is come across to this stopwatch icon and before clicking it, hold down the Alt key, then click the stopwatch. It's going to open up this little box that we're going to paste some code into. Now, down in the description, I have linked a, a paste bin, which is just the expression that you need to copy and paste in. So really simple, visit the description, copy all the code there and paste it into this box here. Now, if you play back your timeline, you should see a much more fluid animation as our circle arrives in the center. Next, we want to start working on our actual logo reveal, which happens before we then transition to the next scene. So we can close down the properties of this base circle intro. What we want to do is create a new composition, which come up to the project window here, right click, new composition, we want to call this logo, and we want to change the width and the height to 520 by 520. That is going to be the size of our logo, so it's square, 60 frames per second still, three seconds of duration still, press OK, and it should open up the new composition uh, ready for our logo. Next, we need to import whatever logo or image you want to actually use in this transition. So you come up to the project window here, right click, go to import, file, uh, find whatever logo or image you want to use. I'm going to use the Twitch logo here, import it, and then drag that down into your logo composition. Depending on the size of the image that you brought in, you're probably going to have to adjust the scale to uh, either reduce it in size or increase it in size so that it fits nicely into this new composition. So come to the layer here, hit S on the keyboard to bring up the scale properties, and then you can just drag this number to the left if you need to make it smaller or drag it to the right if you need to make it bigger. If you're working with an image with any kind of transparency, then it can be worth toggling the transparency grid by clicking this button here. You can always zoom in on the preview, by the way, by rolling your mouse wheel up once or down once to zoom back out again. Um, so let's enable the transparency and we need to have a colored background behind this. So if you come to the timeline, right click, go to new and solid, then you can choose whichever color you want to have the background. And I'd work with your brand colors here or whatever color you want to experiment. You can always come in and change it. For me and the Twitch logo, I'm going to use the Twitch's purple, uh, and then hit OK. And we want to make sure that we put this at the bottom of our composition so our logo fits on top. So that's actually all we need to do in our logo composition. So we can swap back to our Stinger transition composition and we want to drag in our logo composition to this layer. So drag it down, make sure that you put it above the base circle intro, and you should see now that we have our logo composition displayed within our Stinger transition composition. Hope you're following with me. The one thing we need to do here is we don't want a square, obviously, which our logo composition is. So we want to add a circular mask to actually make part of this transparent. So if you highlight the logo composition layer and then come back up and double click on the ellipse tool, that will create a circular mask of the right size by default um, so that it's going to be a similar size to our base circle intro. The last stage in this step is just to scale down our logo composition ever so slightly. So highlight the logo composition layer, hit S on your keyboard to bring up the scale properties and just change this from 100 to 83%. And that should now be a similar size to our base circle intro. Okay, so now that we have our logo composition placed within our Stinger transition, we actually want to work on revealing our logo in the middle of this composition because what we want to happen is the logo to come in once the circle is settled, show on screen and then move back out again to reveal the new scene. So what we want to do is work across our timeline to find a point where our base circle intro stopped moving. So this can be useful to actually hide our logo layer so that we can just see the animation of the base circle moving. So actually it keeps moving a little bit longer. So around about one second here is where we want to have our playhead. So we can re-enable the logo layer if we want. But we want to actually be selecting the base circle intro layer. And at the playhead of one second, we want to be pressing Control shift d to split the layer at that point. And then we can rename the second layer base circle outro. Right, these next steps might sound complicated, but just follow me through it and we'll have our logo being revealed in no time. So what we wanna do is highlight our base circle outro layer and duplicate it twice by pressing Control D twice. So we have three of the same layer here effectively. We're gonna rename one of them to matte reveal circle and the other to logo mask. 
Next, we need to move the logo mask above our logo layer. So your layer composition should look the exact same as mine right now. Next, we need to change the size of both of these duplicated layers. So go to the matte reveal circle layer, hit S for scale. We want to change this one to 91% and on our logo mask layer, hit S again and we want to change this to 95%. Next, we're actually going to configure how these different layers interact with each other by using track mats. So if you have this option here, track mat and the drop down boxes, then that's great. If you don't see it, you just need to right click on any of the headings up here, go to columns and make sure that you have this modes option enabled. And then you should have this column or track mat. The two that we need to change is for the base circle outro layer. We want to change the track mat to alpha inverted mat, mat reveal circle, that one. And we want to change the logo track mat to alpha matte logo mask. So if you followed me through that, congratulations. If we play back our timeline now, what we should see is our circle bouncing into place and then at one second, our logo being revealed in the middle of the screen. Now it's not particularly flashy. We want to add some animation to the logo being revealed. But if you're at this point, then congratulations for getting through probably the hardest part of the tutorial. So let's add some animation to our logo reveal so that it starts out of view, slides into position, holds in position, and then slides back out of view. So to do that, we first need to extend some of the layers here. So this top layer, the logo mask, we actually need this to start around frame 30. So if you come down to the timeline here and you hover your mouse around the edge of the layer, you should see this handle. You can just click that and then drag it back to start at 30 frames in. And the other one that we need to do is the bottom layer, base circle, intro. We want this to keep going until around 80 frames in. Again, you can see the frame counter here next to the left of my mouse. You should see the number 80 which is uh, one second and 20 frames in. We wanna drag this one across so that it lasts until 80 frames in. So to get the logo appearing from the left and coming into view, we're gonna to need to use position keyframes on the logo composition. So come up to the logo layer here, hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position keyframes. And just as before, we're gonna work backwards. So we've got it in place now. We want to add a keyframe here at 80 frames into the composition and a second keyframe about 40 frames further. So let's go to uh, two seconds in exactly, which will be 120 frames. Again, I'm looking here at my frame counter. I want to add a second keyframe here, which you do by clicking the little diamond once you've already added one. And then we want to go back in time 40 keyframes, uh, which is actually 240 frames in. And we want this to be off to the left. So make sure we have our selection tool highlighted over here. Drag our logo off to the left. Again, we can hold down shift to keep it in plane. Just make sure that it's off the canvas in some way. And then we want to go all the way to the right, 40 frames after the 120 frames uh, mark, which is here, 160 frames. Do the exact same, drag it off to the right, hold down shift so it stays in plane, and then we'll add another keyframe there. So if we play this back now, we have a really static animation of it coming in. And we'll play with those keyframes now to easy ease them. So to make this animation a little bit more natural, what we want to do is drag our mouse to highlight all four keyframes so that they turn blue and then hit F9 on our keyboard, which will change them to easy ease. But we want to play again with uh, the, the values a little bit more. So we click this button up here, which goes to the graph editor. You should see a graph that looks like this. If you don't, just right click anywhere and make sure that you have edit speed graph selected. Then you should get a graph that looks like this. And then again, drag a box over these four keyframes so that they all turn yellow. And then we want to pull these handles in so that the influence reads at around 90%. Something like that looks good. And then drag the right hand one in as well to the left so that it influences 90%. And if we now play back our timeline, you can see that our logo reveal happens in a much more smooth and animated fashion as it sort of picks up speed and then leaves with a bit of speed as well. Once you've done that, you can close the graph editor again by clicking this button to go back to our sort of timeline view. And yeah, if we play this back, it looks a lot more animated. And you can see here at the end, we're left with sort of an empty circle, which is where our new second scene in OBS is going to be revealed between. So the actual last stage is to zoom into this circle. So we want the new scene to appear in this circle and then we want the circle to sort of fly past the camera and the new scene to be revealed full screen. So to do that, what we're going to do is add an adjustment layer. So come down to our timeline, right click down here and go to new adjustment layer and make sure that it's at the top of your composition. We can rename this uh, final zoom or something like that just to make sure that we know exactly which layer is which. So what we want to do here is add an actual effect to this layer to allow it to zoom in. So you should somewhere in Adobe After Effects see an effects and presets window. If you don't, then come up to the window option here, make sure you have effects and presets ticked, and then you should see it. It might be minimized like that, but just open it up so that you have a search box. And we're gonna search for the word transform and this distort transform effect, we're going to drag and place onto our adjustment layer. 
you'll see a new window pop up with all of the effect controls for this transform effect, but I actually prefer to control these down in the timeline. So on the final zoom layer, if you click on this arrow to expand and then effects and then transform, you should see the same controls here. And we're going to be playing with this scale um, part of the effect to make sure that we can zoom into our final layer. So if we scrub across the timeline to somewhere around about 160 frames in, once the circle is empty, we want to add a scale property here by clicking the stopwatch that will add the keyframe. And then if we move forward around 10 frames to 170, we want to then increase the scale so that it fills the screen. So if you just click on the number here and drag it to the right, we want to keep increasing this until it no longer appears on the screen. So somewhere around about 600 seems to work. And then if we play this back, it's a little bit static, but you can see it's doing exactly what we want it to do. We might as well easy ease these keyframes since we know how to do that now. So you just drag and highlight them both and hit F9 and it will just make this animation a little bit smoother. Not that there's much to tell because it's so quick. And the final thing that we need to do is add a little bit of motion blur. Motion blur just helps sell the effect, any effect with motion to the human eye because we see quick moving things with blur. So we can do that in the final zoom effect quite easily. Just come to the use composition shutter angle here in the effect controls, change that to off. And then the option below shutter angle, we want to change that to 180 degrees. So you can just click on it, enter 180, and you can see we now get some blur as it's moving quickly across our screen. For the other layers, it's actually much more simple. So if we collapse all our options here and we look at the layers that have motion, it's this first layer, which is the base circle intro has motion and then the logo coming across the screen that has motion too. So to enable motion blur for them, it's much more simple. You click this button here to enable motion blur for all the layers where we select it. And then you want to find the column with the same logo or the same icon and enable it for those uh, layers. So this first layer here, if we click it, we should see the layer change to have some motion blur. And now you can see that there's some blurred elements as it's moving across the screen. And the other one was the logo appearing on screen. So if we find the logo layer and tick that option again, we now see some motion blur attached, which is gonna make it look much more natural. All right, the good news is the Stinger transition is pretty much done. We're gonna add some final effects in just a little bit, but really the main majority of the work is done and we can now start working on our track mat. To put it simply, the track mat is essentially just a duplicate of what we've built here in the Stinger transition, but we're gonna use the colors black and white to actually tell OBS which scene to show where. So OBS will take any areas that are black and show the previous scene where you have black and any areas that are white is gonna be showing the next scene. So this is how you can actually have two scenes showing simultaneously, which is the update that they added in OBS version 27. Since we've created so much of the motion already, we actually just want to create a duplicate of this. So if you come back up to your project window, should be here next to your effect controls. You can always come up to window and make sure you have project enabled. We want to create a duplicate of the Stinger transition composition that we've just made. So highlight it, press control D to make a duplicate. Let's rename this one track mat to keep them separate. And then if we double click it to actually open the composition, we'll see it's an exact duplicate right now and we can remove some of these layers. So some of these layers aren't relevant to our track mat. So when we're in the track mat composition, we can actually remove them from this composition. Those are the base circle intro, the mat reveal circle and the logo mask. So you can hold down control and click on these three or delete them individually and then just press the delete key to remove them from our composition. You'll probably see your screen go bright white like me. That's just because the track mat options are no longer valid. So if you come to these options here and just change these both back to no track mat. So like I mentioned, OBS needs the colors black and white to actually tell it which scenes to display when. So what we need to do is create a new solid black, which we can do by coming down to the timeline here, right clicking, going to new solid and changing the color to pure black. So hex code all zeros, uh, clicking OK and obviously dragging this down to the bottom of our composition. Next, we can actually come back to the base circle outros track mat and change this to alpha inverted matte logo. Now, rather than purple or whatever color you have here, we actually want this to be pure white. So if we come up to our effects controls again, clear our previous search and type in fill. There should be this generate fill effect that you can drag onto the base circle outro layer. And then in the options, we want to change this from red or whatever color it's giving you by default to pure white. So all Fs on the hex code or just drag it into the top left corner and click OK. A couple of last changes that we need to make is to scale up the logo size. So if you highlight the layer, press S, change the 83% to 88% then we should be completely covering our base circle behind it. If you play this back, you probably notice that there's this awkward bit as, as it appears and you sort of see this moon crest, which we actually don't need in the track mat layer at all. So to get rid of that, we can just open up the logo layers position keyframes uh, and we can delete these first two keyframes. So highlight them both, press the delete key. And then now if we play this back, we should just get 
the uh, circle being revealed and then zooming in, which is absolutely perfect. So effectively, what OBS is going to see from this track mat is current scene whenever it's black, new scene being revealed in the middle and then zooming into that new scene, which is the, represented by the color white. Right, we're almost there. The next step that we need to do is actually combine our stinger transition with our track mat. So to have the two videos playing next to each other. So we go back to our project window up here, right click, create a new composition. And we can name this something like combined. It's gonna be the combined videos together. And rather than having a 1920 by 1080 composition, we actually want this to be twice the width of that because it's two 1080p videos playing next to each other. So change the width here to 3840, I believe if my math is right, by 1080, 60 frames per second, still three seconds in duration and named combined and we can click OK. So we should get a nice wide preview now, which is going to be two 1080p videos playing next to each other. Uh, what we actually want to do is probably toggle the transparency grid just to make things a little bit easier to see because obviously the stinger has transparency. We want to drag in our stinger transition composition and our track map composition into this combined composition and they both appear in the middle. We want to move the stinger to the left and move the track map to the right. So to do that, let's open up the position keyframes on the stinger transition. We want to move this to the left 960 pixels. So you can actually just put minus 960, which will move it all the way to the left and the exact opposite for the track map, open up the position keyframes, do 1920 plus 960, press enter and the maths will be done for you by Adobe After Effects. And now if we play these back next to each other, we're gonna see the stinger on the left with its transparency and the track map on the right, which is just the black and white telling OBS which scene to show and they should be completely synced up. Perfect. I'm really happy with how this is looking, but with just a few more minutes, we can add some of the built-in effects into After Effects to really make this stinger transition pop. So we're really nearly there, but just a few of the built-in effects are really gonna help this stinger flourish. So down in the description below the video, we have included a download link to a couple of assets that we're gonna be dropping into this project to really help it pop. Um, and you just need to download the file, unzip it, and then import the two video files into our project. So come back to the project window here, right click, import file, find the two video files. They should be called Ripple and Trails and import them into your project. Next, we want to move back to our Stinger transition composition, which is actually where we're going to add these. Again, we can toggle the transparency grid if you want to see it. And we'll drop both of these video files down to the bottom of the composition. So if we play back the timeline, we can see the two effects that have been added. The first is these sort of trail lines that follow the circle up into the screen. And the second is this ripple effect as the circle sort of lands in its final position. I know they're not the right color and you can quite easily customize the color. I'll show you how to do that in just a second but the first change we're going to make is to make sure that these water ripples actually move with the final bounce of our uh, base circle intro so they're not moving with it they're just sort of showing in the center of the screen and it'd be nice if they were exactly centered around this circle so to do that it's very easy we move our timeline across to one second in when the circle is fully finished in its bounce animation and it's in the middle of the screen and then we want to actually parent the ripple asset to the base circle intro so you should be able to see this drop down for parent and link again if you haven't just right click up here columns and make sure you have parent and link ticked and on the ripple effect we want to parent that to the base circle intro option number six for me if you click that we should now see that the ripples move with the circle so if we play that back the ripples are going to look much more natural because they're moving with the animation of the bounce. To change the colors so that they match our circle or whatever colors you want to use, again, we're going to use this fill effect. We still have it typed in for the previous time we used it. So just type into the effects and presets fill and drag this onto both of our video files. So the top one, let's change the color from red again to our Twitch purple and the exact same for the bottom effect, the trail assets, drag it on, change the color to whatever you please. And then if we play that back, we now have all of the effects happening with the right colors as well. Two last effects to add that are really quick and easy to add. Let's go back across to our combined composition and search for an effect called Drop Shadow. And we can drag that across onto our Stinger transition and you should see a small drop shadow added to the bottom right corner of your circle logo. And we're just going to make this a little bit more pronounced by changing the distance to 10 and the softness to 25. And you should see here if I zoom in, 
a nice drop shadow and it applies to the whole effect so everything that comes up even the ripple lines will have a drop shadow too the last effect that we're going to add i promise you is worth it is going to be a light sweep which kind of makes our logo look really embossed and professional so uh, come up to the effects and presets panel search for light sweep and we should see this one called cc light sweep which again we can drag onto our stinger composition and our effect should show up here we can actually collapse the drop shadow because we've done that already and we just want to change a couple of the options here to really make sure it sticks out so let's change the direction ever so slightly from minus 30 degrees to minus 25 we want to up the width to something around 150 the sweep intensity to 50 and the edge thickness to 10. And then we actually want to animate this sweeping across our logo as it lands. So to animate this light sweep coming across our logo, we want to keyframe uh, its exact position uh, of the effect. So to do that, there's this center property which we can keyframe. So if we start with a keyframe at 70 frames in, uh, let's add a keyframe there, but we don't want it to be on our logo here. We actually want it to be off screen to the left. So if we drag the X axis all the way off to the left to something around minus 200, you can see this is where the effect is and it's coming at this angle completely off screen. So it's not going to interact with anything that we have at this point. And we want to, want to add another keyframe um, somewhere around about two seconds in. So let's say frame 120, exactly two seconds in. We want to move this um, light sweep all the way across. So it goes past our logo and off to the right somewhere here around about uh, 2100. So you can see the two keyframes that we've added here. If we now play this back, I'll get it nice and zoomed in so you can see it. Uh, the effect we play it back we're going to see the light sweep go across our logo and doesn't that isn't that worth it aren't you glad you stayed for the extra couple of minutes to get that light sweep across our logo i think that looks really professional so all we've got to do now is render this out as a webm and then add it into obs studio so to export this out and actually use it in obs studio we need to use a video format that supports transparency because we obviously have all of this transparent background that we need to use in our stinger transition so the video format i would recommend using is webm obs studio loves it and a lot of stingers are made using the webm video format but it's not by default installed on your PC. So do head to the link in the description if you don't have it as a codec option um, and download and install it and then you'll be able to render out using the WebM codec. So once that's done, make sure you're on our combined composition here, come up to composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. And that can take a few seconds to launch if it's not already launched. We just wanna change some of the options here. So we can actually click here on the format to bring up all of the options that we can change in this export settings. So we've changed the format from whatever it is by default to WebM. If you don't see the option, like I said, you haven't installed the codec correctly. So just make sure you do that. You should be able to select WebM as the format. We click on output name. We can actually choose where we want to save that. So I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Stinger with Track Mat. So I know exactly what it is. Uh, we don't have any audio in this, so you can uncheck the export audio. You want to leave the resolution and the frame rate. The codec settings by the defaults are absolutely fine. So VP9 constant quality of 50 with two pass encoding. You do want to make sure you're including the alpha channel by checking this box. And if you see down here, the estimated file size, it says it's going to be 12 megabytes, which is just Adobe lying to you. I wouldn't recommend having um, any kind of transitions as big as that. But uh, actually on export, this seems to be about 600 kilobytes or something, which is absolutely fine. So ignore the estimated file size. We'll see what it is actually once we've rendered. So you click OK and then click the play icon up here to start the render. And this will take a few minutes just depending on how quick your PC is. So once that's finished rendering, we can open up OBS Studio. I have a really simple stream set up here just to demonstrate four different scenes. Uh, but we come to the scene transitions window here and we want to select to add a stinger. Uh, we can name this whatever we want. Again, I would recommend doing a stinger with track mat just so you know which one it is. Click OK and then we want to browse for the video file that we just rendered out. So I put that onto my desktop. You can actually see the file size in the end was 660 kilobits. So well, well below the 12 megabytes that it was estimating. If we add that, the only other option we need to change is to tick the user track mat option. As you can see, the mat layout is same file side by side, stinger on the left, track mat on the right, which is exactly how we rendered it out. We don't need to worry about the transition point because again, we're using a track mat. So if we click OK and then we test out our transition, we should see it all working correctly. And as you can see, it's absolutely perfect. You can see the new scene being revealed behind our logo whilst the old scene is still showing. So that is exactly what a track mat allows you to do, showing both scenes at the same time.
So that's it, we're done. Hopefully this video has been helpful and you now have a Stinger transition with track mat and your logo and your brand colors and it's all looking amazing and you've learned so much about After Effects. So if you have learned a lot and you're now using a new Stinger, do give the video a thumbs up, help share it around with other streamers. That really does help me out. And yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It was a lot of effort to make. I've got to give a big shout out to Defrag, who is the editor for the Gaming Careers channel, who helped me massively with creating this Stinger transition and it wouldn't have been possible without him. Um, so yeah, go and show him some love. I'll leave his link down in the description below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Yeah. Uh, it gives you even some previews of light mode and dark mode on Twitch. Um, let's just do one more rave. Um, this could be pretty scary, I think. <laughs> this is the one where it changes color, Ben. Um, yeah. It's processing for a few seconds. There you go. I mean, that is that is the stuff of nightmares. There. <laughs> <laughs>